So we're taking a look at Kevin's 03 Cobra Terminator. actually seen on YouTube quite a few times and I actually watched videos of this car several times uh, when I had magna packs with long tubes right before I was putting the long tubes on my Cobra and I think I even saw this car on YouTube prior to me picking up my 03 Cobra because I just went over YouTube everywhere when I was about ready to buy my 03 Cobra and this is like one of the only cars on YouTube with some good quality, you know, high quality video, really good sounds, and then just, I mean, you did everything from pulley to whipple. Actually, that's your video, right? Pulley. Yeah, pulley to whipple. So, I've had the car for 10 years. You know, usually I don't keep the cars that long, you know, and it's just, this one, it was just a little bit special to me. It started off because I had a 2011 five liter. You know, intake, tune, exhaust, it made uh, about 425 to the tire. I had 7,800 miles on it, and I was on a Make-A-Wish cruise, and it, it popped cylinder number seven. And of course, I was one of the first in the country to blow it up. Not, that's a, an award you don't really want to win. So anyway, so it was on a Make-A-Wish cruise. Ford had told me it was one of the first ones they had blown up. They flew an engineer in, they looked at my car, it had a tune in it, and a big ass hole in cylinder number seven, piston number seven. They found my YouTube videos, okay, back in 2010. It probably would have been smart to take them down, but they found the videos, and um, I was able to sweet talk my way. I said, look, you know, for customer loyalty, you know people are gonna be, it's not like I have crazy things done to this, it's just an intake, a tune, and an exhaust. And it grenaded the motor, and, 7,000 miles. And they said, you know what, for customer loyalty, we will refresh it because we want to take it apart and see what happened. And you know, they built it back and it's just, I couldn't get over the feeling. Every time I got on it, I'd be looking behind, is it smoking, is it smoking, did it blow up again? And at the time I was watching YouTube and there was just something special about the 03 Cobras and it had to be a sonic blue one. I think it was on like some FR500 wheels. It had a stock blower, unported, and I took it to the dyno the second day of ownership, and it made 438. And my friends like, you know, I have a ported blower for it. So I'm like, well, yeah, let's put it on. Put the ported blower on, and it made 
478. <laughs> car was a lot of fun. That was back in 2011. I ported it the first year. Um, we went along to, after that, Whipple had just come out, I believe here, Whipple had just came out with the 2.9 Gen 2. And I'm like, well, I got to have that. Threw that on the car, and we made, I'm going to push my memory here. I think it made 603. And then if I ran Torco, it made like 665, and I Torco the, the hell out of the car. I had it like that for probably four or five years. I just enjoy driving the car. You know, it's not always about racing every single night, you know. I've taken it to the dragway a few times. You know, it's still IRS in the back. It's not on bias flies. It's not on drag radials. It's just a fun car to go out cruising and having fun. And if I backtrack a little bit, the reason I got a Cobra was, it was like, I think it was called Snake Bite, the Snake Bite video. Mm -hmm. And it was just, and then he had, forget the other guy's name. Maybe you can help me out here. His name was, um, he had a Sonic Blue one with a Kenny Bell, and he had a very popular YouTube channel. And yeah. I'm forgetting the guy's name. I know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm sure someone will comment it here. Somebody too. remember it. And I remember he did so much damn racing. I need to get a Cobra because that's what I want. I want the supercharger line. I want the green gauges. I want to be able to put a Whipple on it and make, my goal was like 550 wheel back in the day. And um, you know, I just want to enjoy the car without the fear of blowing it up after just blowing up the five wheel. The reason I kind of started making some of these YouTube videos, you know, I kind of make them for fun. It's not really a business for me, but one of the, the the nicest comments I read on my channel are on my longer videos is, hey man, I bought a Cobra because of your videos. And you know, your videos are what got me into the car. And you know, I, I appreciate stuff like that. And I like helping people out and you know, giving them an idea of what the car is like to own. It's, I tried to explain this to you earlier, it's not a good car. These aren't great cars. They're gonna rattle, they're gonna shake, the interior we won't even talk about, you already know, it's, it's from like a 1998 Conaline van. You can almost see through, if you take the shifter off, it's just, the thing on the inside is a piece of crap. But it's how it feels going down the road. It is just so fun with the instant torque, and it is, it's just the raw feel. It's hard to describe unless you've been in one and you drive one you know, with the drive-by cable in, you know, with the man, there's, there's no traction control, it's turned off, there's no stability control. Hell, it's not even a knock sensor in this thing, it's kind of old school. We'll talk about where the car is right now, so we're on the 10th year ownership. I actually, so I had the Gen 2 Whipple, and I actually sold that for a Gen 3 29. It came in the box, and my car was in storage, so I didn't, I didn't need it just yet. And it was just kind of a funny how the story happened. I've been Whipple for four or five years at that time, and TVS came out with a 2650, and I'm like, you know, I'm gonna get that. And I actually bought one, and um, I sold the Whipple, the the two, th uh, the Gen 3, got the TVS 20, uh, 2650, found out you had to beat your crossover pipe after already buying it, which... The Thor smash. The hammer smash. I remember all the memes. <laughs> it was just so many memes. Uh, it, was, it was endless. And, you know, the results were not really that great for that blower and there was a lot of negativity and at that exact moment Whipple came out with their Gen 4 Crusher and I'm like, you know, if I can sell the TVS for a reasonable sum, I'm going to go back to Whipple 
And I had a guy out of California, he offered me almost exactly what I was asking for the whole setup. I mean, I had the, I had the throttle body, I had the plenum. I actually had the crusher intake because the TVS intake that you're supposed to use wasn't the, the right size or I forget what it was. The crusher intake was like a five inch tube or something like that. So I had everything and he ended up getting it. So it's a custom grind set of Todd Warren Tams. You know, Todd's the man. I, like I talk to him and he just makes me feel like I don't know anything. And that's not to say bad about him, it's the wealth of knowledge he has. Um, you know, I told him, look, I want the car to drive really nice. And I want the car to make good power. I, what I, I want it to sound right, but I don't want to sacrifice, I don't want to hate driving the car because it got cams. Because I had actually drove a buddy's car and it, to be honest, really didn't drive all that nice. And you had to rev it to like 1800 to get it to go. And he's got a spec three, which is super on and off compared to my RXT. And like, if you let the RPMs fall, it would just stutter, 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 stutter. You could not get the car to move. It was like my first time driving a standard. It was pretty embarrassing. I told him, make it grind for uh, drivability, power, and then sound finally. And uh, he knocked it out of the park. So on pump gas, now the car makes 745. pounds on um, a little bit of Torco, which is what him and I had some uh, fun in today. It makes just about 800 of the tire. On 21 pounds. And then um, Ignite, which you can see over there, which I actually just ran out of Ignite, so I actually just had to get some more as a GTR shop to make like 1800 wheel GTRs all the time. They're the ones I buy my Ignite from. Um, the real good stuff, it makes um, 931. So when I originally bought the car, it had an X-pipe on it. And you know, it was the Magna Flows with an X-pipe. And it sounded good. It wasn't my favorite sound, but it sounded good. And I had just put the Whipple on and I put in a catted X-pipe. I actually bought some, I think they were called Random Technology Race Cats. They're pretty expensive. They're the metal substrate. They're supposed to be for really high horsepower cars. And I was actively filming an exhaust video back in 2012, I think it was. And my buddy's outside and I, I hammer it, I ship one to two and the car just completely coughed. immediate check engine light, a bunch of black smoke out the back, and I'm like, great. I just blew the car up mid-shoot of an exhaust video, okay? Like, what are the odds? Come to find out, the um, catalytic converter, the core, shot out the back and got stuck in the X-pipe and completely blocked half of the exhaust. And I didn't find that out until I took the X-pipe apart and I'm like, maybe the motor is, is not hurt. And I was, I was so relieved. I said, you know what? I gotta get rid of this sex pipe. And I bought the Pro Chamber, which is a pretty popular option at the time. I'll tell you, the build quality sucks on it. But to date, out of all the exhaust has had, the Magna Packs with the Pro Chamber, it was the money exhaust. It sounded, it had just the right amount of rasp without being raspy. It had just the right amount of drone without being too droney. 
and um, it was really pretty ludicrous at fitting mine high enough. So yeah, like when you would look sweet. when you would look underneath the car, and you can see this in my photography back in 2012, 2013, you see the box underneath the car in every shot. And it's not about saying you have to be like down here. You can it was at least an inch and a half lower than any other part of the vehicle. And I scraped that thing every day. I mean my car is low, it's it's at the same height now that it was back then. It's on iBot Pros. But you could not go anywhere without scraping the middle section of your exhaust. And I actually, I think I almost scraped clean through it. You know, that gets old. So currently the car's on, and, you know, I'm sure we'll link in some, some other videos. Right now it's, it's on a Bassani three inch. So it's got a ARH uh, long tubes, inch and three quarters. Some might say, well, why didn't you go inch and seven eighths? You know, it's on a higher power car and you make a good point. But it was pretty easy. I asked Todd, he, he ground the cans, and it was as simple as, hey, what do you want for the car? And he told me he wanted the inch and three quarters, and I'm not going to argue with the, the mastermind. He said, do it. It was pretty simple. So it's inch and three quarter ARH lung tubes. It actually now has an H pipe from ARH, which you'll see there's not many H pipes in the Cobra community, but I kind of wanted to get away from the raspiness of the X. on these cars, it wakes up the exhaust sound dramatically behind the vehicle. Like cruising RPM outside the car, it is, it is ticketable, a ticketable level of exhaust cruising. And I got pulled over for it, God, it's really giving me a hard time. And I'm like, look man, it's, you know, I, I appreciate you guys, you guys are doing a great job, but it's, it's loud, I'm trying to behave myself. And you know, he's like, well, you know, I'll let you off, but you really need to change your exhaust. So. I did go to the H, and I went to the, the Bassani. It actually has real mufflers on it now. It's, if you've seen Magna Packs, it's really a... Straight through with a some com shagged, sharp... Yeah, it's a complete inside. straight through exhaust. Yeah. So, it sounds great. It was definitely loud, but with the, with the Magna, with the... Pro Chamber, it really was the perfect exhaust. Yeah. So, I mean, it sounds pretty good now. I don't dislike it, but it doesn't sound as good as it did back then. The reason why I like the Magnum Packs, because I wanted Borla Stingers. A lot of people do the Stingers. I've, I've honestly, I've never had a Borla exhaust in this car. And so, it's the Magnum Packs sound very similar, and when I bought my O3 Cobra, I literally spent like all my money. I was pretty broke after that for a little bit, so I couldn't afford the Borlo, so I was like, well, Magna Packs are like, what, 60 bucks each? Yeah, you, just, you get them on Amazon, 60, 70 bucks each. Either you weld them in yourself or you, you have your exhaust shop do it. Yeah, and I had I had a Magna Flow cap back too, so, so it's super easy. You cut, just cut, cut, put, put them in, yep. and it is a dramatic difference. I mean, very dramatic. You know, it's just fun going over the, you know, the memories of the car and you know I hope to keep the car you know I've had it like I said 10 years and I hope to have it for another 10 years. So another uh, thing that maybe people have recognized on this car is how many sets of wheels I've had and you know there's been a reason for that somewhat as of recently which I will get into in a minute but I've had almost everything on this car. The CCW Classics are the Cobro Classic. The Cobro Classic is the CCW classic. So I originally had some FR500s on the car. They were the black with polished lip. It's not, I'm not hating on black wheels, but they look trash. Sorry. 
Um, th those, those are carbon fiber. They get those are carbon fiber. They have an excuse. Fake Chinese wheels that are black, to me, look trash. Especially on a, I mean, on a black car, it makes more sense. On a blue car, I really think you need a wheel that, that pops. Mm -hmm. So I was able to do a trade. I, tr I traded for a set of Celine replicas, and I really liked it. And, you know, I had those for a few years. They were a popular wheel. It looked good. You know, they were heavy. They are like 34 pounds, you know, but it was, it was a fun wheel. My buddy messaged me. This is back when we still used Craigslist. Not that you use that anymore. He goes, listen, man. He goes, I found a set of true CCW classics for your Cobra, and they are $800. And if, you know, you're in the wheel industry a little bit, CCWs do not sell for $800. No. Nope. And I went to go, he only had one picture, which was the first sign. I went up to go get them. They actually came on a, tr they were on a true track. I forget, I, I really want to say it was a 2000 Cobra R, and I know those are super, super ultra rare. So maybe it wasn't, but I mean, we're talking nine years ago, maybe my memory's fading me. But it was on a, like an open track car, and he used them for a whole year. They were covered in brake dust, and then he just let them sit over the winter coated in brake dust. So in the spring, he took these wheels out, and they were legit orange. They had started to oxidize all the uh, metal in the brake dust had oxidized, and it was just, these wheels were rough. And uh, I was able to bring them back to life, powder coated the barrels, I had to repolish the faces, and um, you know, I maybe put $400 into them with, you know, a lot of ibuprofen for the shoulder, for the hand polishing, but um, they look really great. Back in the day, the only comment I used to get is, where's your, where's your uh, center caps, man? Where's your center caps? Well, they couldn't have center caps because they were cut for a, a, a true race car. They, could, they did not have center caps. So I ended up moving on from that wheel. I went to the, man, I went to the True Forged. I bought a set of True Forged uh, Mach 5s and they were polished and I actually had them um, clear powder coated over the polish, which I was super nervous about doing, but if you've owned classics, you understand if you get caught in the rain and your car sits, you're, you are at least 45 minutes per wheel hand polishing to get it to look nice again. I mean, it was an insane amount of upkeep with the wheel. So I'm like, you know, I wanna get a powder coated wheel. So I, I went with the Mach 5s. It was a great wheel. I don't think True Forge is in business anymore. I don't think so either. I, I think they kind of they, they were struggling a few years ago and and um, haven't heard much. Since. I see some sets for sale come up, and um, you know, the only thing I didn't love about my Mach Fives is again they were really heavy, and I don't even know if it was just because of the big brake cut. I you know I got the bare uh, six pistons up here. So I know he had to do a, a thicker off, a thicker, you know, base to, to cut clear the brakes, and but they were like 27, 28 pounds, which is pretty heavy for a forged aluminum wheel. So at that time, I ended up meeting a really good guy. He's literally become one of my best friends. He's gonna be in my wedding. Uh, he's one of my groomsmen. Um, he owns his own wheel company. And, you know, he, we just quickly became really good friends. I've been at the cruise to the Bahamas with this guy. He's just a really nice man. And, um, you know, I've started to help kind of bring custom forged wheels to the Cobra community with the connection of him. And it's not like I'm the only guy. It's, I'm not trying to say that. It's just, you know, I've had so many sets of wheels. I've had welds, which I didn't talk about. I had... Um, I had AFS replicas, which is a really hot wheel, yep. which my AFSs looked great for about like four weeks. And then literally the chrome started peeling off in sheets. It was just like, you could literally just take the chrome and you would peel off like a piece like this big. And uh, it just went downhill pretty quick. Um, 
This is my newest set of wheels. This is actually BC Forged. Um, they were a, they're not a new company, but kind of in the Cobra community, they don't really, there's not really a market for them. The Ford Mustang, they, they have been trying to enter into really just a Ford market. Because um, they're huge on a lot of uh, Audis. They're huge on, um, they're really big on like the Camaros. They're, they're kind of big on the S550, so kind of yours a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the 19, 20 inch sizes, but for 18s, there's really not many offhand. I think before I bought mine, there's maybe three or four guys running BC Forged, but you know, there really are some good benefits to running BCs or CCWs cost wise at least, and they're the same quality wheel. And, uh, these are the TDO threes. Uh, you know, I do get some crap. They say they look like factory wheels, which is. I'll just be honest, that's why I got them. I think the classic five spoke with a little bit of dish in the back and a little bit in the front is kind of the best look for these cars. Yeah. And uh, I went with the brush clear gloss because again, after owning polished wheels twice, I, I think I'm, uh, I'm done with polished wheels. So brush clear is, for me, the way to go. Yeah, interesting fact, some of the guys over at BC um, Forge they came over from CCW because CCW pretty much flopped. Yeah, and like, they got bought out by Weld. When they got bought out by Weld, things started working again, but they they basically jumped ship and went over to BC Forge. So the same guys who made all the awesome stuff at CCW started making at BC Forged. You know, the, probably it is overwhelming. So this is just a monoblock. So there's really not too much. With BC Forge, you can decide how, how much concavity you want in the wheel. Um, you know, uh, this is a one-piece wheel, so you, you don't have hardware, it's not a multi-piece wheel. But, um, you know, we did a blend between the amount of lip and the amount of concavity. So we did like a 50-50 blend. But BC Forge Modular Series, there are so many different designs. It is like nauseating at first when you look at how many designs, I mean, you could go from anywhere from safe and simple to way out of the box. Um, there's so many different finishes and the best part is the price you see is the price you pay. Like they don't nickel and dime you like CCW does. And you know the, the funniest thing, the one car you almost sold it for is literally exactly this one but in the lightning blue. Not the velocity blue. The velocity blue is not my favorite, but the lightning blue with the white stripes with the whipple on it. I almost pulled the trigger on selling this one. Some guy wanted to offer me 38 grand, which is probably 5,000 more than it's really worth, and ended up kind of being like this weird whole story. And I think the kid was serious in buying it, and then once his parents found out, they're like, yeah, you're dumb, you're not buying that car. And the deal <laughs> fell through. And honestly, I'm glad I kept it, because it is just, it's a timeless design. I think uh, the value is going up. The value is going up, unless you listen to the Cobros, you know, yelling at you if you ask for too much money on your car. Just I need to buy another one soon before they goes up even more. Well, you know, you think about it. This is what I think about. I think, and the Cobro is going to attack me here because I don't have the figures memorized. So the blue was only 03, and I think they made for coupes like a thousand forty of them back in 03, and those are rough numbers. Hopefully, they're pretty accurate, and. How many are actually left, say, under 70,000 miles that don't look like they belong in a trailer park? Is it 200? Yeah. And 900? Wrecked. I mean, there are so many. So many that have been wrecked, wrecked and, 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 not, and parted out. You know, is it, is it one of 100? No, probably not. Is it one of 500? Maybe. Is it one of 800? Maybe. So, I mean, I kind of like, not just having because it, it's rare. I mean, it, it's something, you drive this car, it gets attention. Yeah. You know, everybody's looking at you and you know it's just it's a fun car honestly it's just a fun car you, you take out the wife you go uh take out to the ice cream stand you get yourself some of your favorite ice cream you're coming back and you get a rich guy in his you know cls amg and you just you know just give him the sauce <laughs> you know it's 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 um you know it's just a street car it's just something that i've had fun with for a long time yeah so if you do want to check out more on this car your channel is intervention 302 so I'll have a link down there and uh, click the thing right up there. Go check it out and he has so many videos on this car. 
essentially from Politi into what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. So the the big one is the Politi Whipple, which I just I don't know. It was just something I, I I thought of making. I think my first one was 2013, and I just kind of went over like the photo shoots that I've done, the modifications that I've done. These were the modifications that I've done, and this were the you know the done results of those modifications. And um, you know, it's kind of like a a photo book or video memory in the car. You know, and one day if I do sell it, which again hope I don't, it's gonna fun be fun going back on that and. Look at all the dumb stuff we did back in the day. You know, I think um, I've grown up a little bit. I'm glad I don't have the power I do now when I was younger because I need to be dead or in jail. So make sure you give the video a big like, comment down below, subscribe if you are new, and we will see you guys in the next one. Oh, and comment if you want to see the race between this and that. And who's gonna win? Or 50-50? Who knows? Who knows? Well, we do. Well, we do know, but they are within 15 to 18 horsepower, manually driven cars, so uh, we'll have to see. Yep.